Hey, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and we're going to hit it hard this morning. We're going to do some good stuff. Uh, we're not working on the Iris data set. Some of that other weak stuff you see out there. It's the real deal. No BS. Um, all right, so a lot of times with data, you want to look at the average change, uh, meaning uh, over time, how is your metric changing? Or from one observation to the next, uh, what the hell changed? So that being said, we're going to get into some cool, um, cool date time parsing stuff and also uh, row operations that kind of get you the prior row within some kind of a group. So um, something called, uh, first of all, this is a string, right? So time, we're just going to look at it again. Uh, df1, I'm just waking up here, so bear with me. Time. That's a string, that's a unicode. It doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything. So, what we can do, and, and here's the thing with this stuff. Dates are annoying in Python. Unless you're building an application that really uh, deals with dates in some kind of a fine way where performance matters, uh, you're just going to figure out how to get it to work each time and then come up with your own sort of habits around how you deal with stuff. So I'm using a third party called um, Date Util. Um, you can Google it. What it does is it automatically guesses uh, how to convert your date object string to a time or vice versa. Um, it just works. So here we go. I don't know exactly what this format is. It's a time with a time stamp and a time zone or something like that. Whatever. I don't really care. I just want to get it into a computable kind of a format so we can subtract dates later on or do other cool stuff. So. What I'm going to do here is um, we're going to call a method on parser. And, and remember, as you're you know finding your way around Python here, uh, you could do stuff. You know, what can parser do? Oh, it can do a lot. Um, it can parse. <laughs> it can parse. Uh, I don't know. It can go to a string. Well, let's parse. So parser dot parse, and we're just going to get this Unicode string guy. And see what it does. <clears throat> All right, so now I have a date time object 2017, May 14th at uh, 14, 57, 19. That's UTC, so I was in Denver or Colorado Springs, so I'm not gonna deal with the time zone because I don't care. If you Google it, you can probably figure it out and get it back to your, uh, to your normal time zone. Why is my GPS not set? Who, I don't know, whatever. We're just looking at the relative differences. So that's a quick, how are we going to apply this now? Now remember this map function where we converted a, um, a one column to another column? We're going to follow the same protocol. We're just going to say df. Um, and you know, you could do two things. You could overwrite time. I'm just going to do time time equals df. Already making mistakes here. We're using df1 because I never converted that. Uh, string to a float and we're just gonna do a map I'm gonna say lambda and here just to get out of the X like I can call a time string and uh, automatically my habits go to <laughs> crap there I put the colon in the wrong place and we're gonna say uh, parser parse time string and we're gonna say df1 head and okay, so we have time, time now. Now let's just see, the whole point was to get these times into a place where we could subtract them and stuff. So let's just take uh, df1, ilo, zero, time, time, minus, uh, and you know, let's go later, like just pick some point, make sure, uh, subtract, something earlier in time and of course we're, we're indexing the rows here so 10 that's row you know like 9 for lack of a better word or you know zero based indexing so now uh, let's see what happens here all right good so we got zero days and 38 seconds all right bam okay so let me just get a hundred rows right 
negative because we're subtracting a time that's later than the original time. All right, good, so now we've proved we can subtract time. Just hold that thought for a second. Um, and let's think about this. So now we wanna get this so we have a prior time. So here's kind of a little bit of interesting uh, function I found a while ago, which is kind of neat. And um, forget how it goes. It's, uh, what is it called? Shift. So, say df1 prior time equals df1 time time shift. I might screw this up at first. Shift one. Okay, so this should be that, and it is. Great. Now, really what I'm trying to do is get the difference. Um, so I want to have like time between or time since. So, yeah, I'm not going to try to be too clever with this. Um, we could just do now df1 time since prior equals df1 uh, prior time minus df1 time time aha and something did not work there let me see what happened prior time why would I a lot of times you don't you're just kind of thinking out loud you're trying to figure out what you're doing there you go I was subtracting it just wasn't working out okay uh, now Let's look at that time since prior column. Um, notice how the, the kind of in place calculation here didn't throw an error on NET because pandas is smart. It didn't uh, didn't blow up. So sometimes you're working with data that doesn't have a value because we're not going to do shift to the um, to, to the prior row, which is nothing. That's like saying you know where when did the universe start? Well, before the universe there wasn't time, right? So what do you mean before? And that's very unsatisfying, but at least Pandas is taking care of us here. Hang on, I'm drinking some coffee. So we're gonna look at this column real quick. Uh, time since prior, like my autocomplete. And this is gonna be, I think, what you would call a series. Yeah, so basically a column of a data frame, it's called a series. And it has some kind of cool methods and this is going to be a big list, but if you start looking under um, two, and thank you people for writing this. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty wild that we have all this stuff for free. I have no idea how it was written, nor could I do it. So this is cool. Um, to clipboard, to CSV, to I don't know what that is, but to dict, to JSON, to pickle, to string to list so this is there's a lot of cool stuff you could do here even if you just read a table in as a csv and you just wanted one column screw the csv module i mean look at this bam all right there on a list uh what was the other one to dict there you go so you have a dictionary now um Let's think about this value counts, and this is going to be kind of stupid, but um, maybe not. So value counts essentially gives you sort of a histogram output. So uh, df1 time since prior value counts. Uh, there were 29 instances where it was uh, three seconds, 27 where it was two seconds, 38 seconds. So if you look at the distribution of the time between um, pings that's actually that's actually kind of neat um, all right so we're gonna pause there we're gonna come back and we're going to uh, I think we're gonna do a little bit of grouping more grouping before we move on to some plotting and get familiar with uh, some of the Python dictionary structures alrighty